Okay, we'll be looking at a demonstration of our understanding of how to prepare a reconciliation statement when you are switching to IFRS uh, compliance in a particular financial period. So we'll be looking at uh, a grip test too to demonstrate your knowledge of your ability to be able to prepare uh, a reconciliation statement. Don't forget, this reconciliation statement uh, is a requirement of International Financial Reporting Standard 1 for first-time adopters. That standard says, in your, as part of your disclosure requirement, you, be, you should be able to prepare a reconciliation statement of your statement of financial position as at the first day that you are preparing your financial uh, statement to be IFRS compliant. You must be able to prepare a reconciliation statement of your income statement as at the first day that you are preparing your IFRS compliance report. So let's use this test to demonstrate our practical understanding. Now, this is a full set of um, a full set of uh, an extract of a financial statement. If you look at this, we have other information from A to E. And when you see question like this, the first thing you go to is a question requirement. Before you even read through the full set of uh, the financial, uh, the, the full set of the requirements in the example, you must make sure that you familiarize yourself with what the examiner is asking about. Now, the first set of the requirement it says you should explain your understanding of your uh, gap analysis. Gap analysis, now number one, if you want to provide your solution without looking at uh, your comprehensive set of accounts, you will see that this one does not require, it does not, re does not require reference to the, does not require reference, does not require reference to questions before you answer it. So this does not require reference to your question before you answer it is a theoretical based question that you can answer. Now let's just answer this one straight away without looking at the question. Now what do we mean by gap analysis? Gap analysis is just a way of remodifying a requirement of IFRS about what we call the reconciliation statement. The reconciliation statement. So it's a way of giving it a name. For example, in our learning of uh, management, our learning of ma management, we're able to uh, describe a gap analysis as a difference, as a difference, as something that is a difference between two things. Two things. It is actually something that is what we call a variation. So that is a literal definition. It is what a variation in two. When we relate that to financial report, so graph analysis is what a variation in comparison of two sets of financial reports. Comparison of two sets of financial reports. So it is the what the variation that comes from the comparison of two sets of financial reports. This gap analysis, gap analysis, gap analysis is from the requirement, is from the requirements of um, IFRS 1 for first-time adopters. It's from the requirement of IFRS 1 for first-time adopters. Of IFRS for financial statements. So this reconciliation report, in a nutshell, we call it what gap analysis. So by the time you are looking at a difference, so the gap analysis explain. By the time you are looking at explanation, explanation of a difference between explanation of bis di difference between financial statements explanation of difference between financial 
statement prepared in line with previous local regulation in line with previous local regulation for instance in Nigeria we call it SAS and those prepared and those prepared in line with uh, IFRS on the first day on the first date of the uh, reporting so that is what we call gap analysis so gap analysis look at the adjustments by the time you look at uh, gap FS you have adjustments you have adjustments then you have IFRS IFRS FS so that adjustment it means the adjustments between this and this is what you call your gap analysis so it is a very very simple definition you can define gap analysis by way of a variation between two sets of financial reports these two sets of financial reports now we are, th we are talking about the financial statement prepared in line with previous uh, generally accepted accounting practices and you that is statement of accounting standard and you are also looking at the one prepared in line with international financial reporting standard on the first date that you are switching to that application so that is about uh, that is about an explanation of gap the second question requires us to prepare a reconciliation statement it says prepare a reconciliation statement extract for super PLC statement of financial position as at 1st December 2011 and 31st December 2012 so look at this it means this like we have learned from our previous study this is a requirement of the uh, IFRS 1 for disclosures for first time adopters first time adopters now when you see this kind of uh, a requirement the first thing you should do in your answer sheet is to go to the page where you are actually answering those requirements so what does that requirement say is requirement number two it says reconciliation just write it out reconciliation statement of equity as hat now we, you are going to be a little bit careful here because if you look at the requirement of the question is actually asking you to prepare that reconciliation report for two years if you look at this now you have to now go to the question requirement to be able to understand what uh, that question is talking about because that is purely uh, a requirement that for you to be able to answer you need to understand the trend of that question now let us go to the question together furtherance to super PLC's case one above with the following additional information now from our definition of uh, application of the first uh, group test which is identifying the period in which the reporting entity is able to adopt uh, IFRS we are able to establish that the first IFRS statement that this guy is going to present is 2012 however he has to present a comparative figure in 2011 now I'm going to go forward to uh, the question here so we know that we are presenting this question uh, based on um, a transition period a transition period of 2011 then we have a reporting period of 2012 we have a reporting period for 2012 now financial statement extracts under SES this financial statement has been prepared in line with local gap this is what you have you have for 2011 and you have for 2000 and, uh, 
you have for 2012 and you have for 2011. Now if you look at this, we have asset category, property, plant and equipment, intangible asset. You have total non current assets. Then you have inventory, trade, uh, and others. So we have current liability, non current liability, total equity. We have equity portion, we have share capital, share premium, retain earnings, total equity. Now, other information section. We were told that the company decided to carry property, plant, and equipment at a revalued amount of 13.9 million. I think this should be million. 13.9 million as at 1st December 2011. The component of each item of property, plant, and equipment was carried out. And each component was depreciated separately using a strength line method based on the estimated economic useful life and residual value. The estimated useful life and residual value at the end of each reporting period are expected to be reviewed. The impact of the component revaluation was an increase in depreciation expense by 73 million naira for the period ended. 31st December 2012. The position on order PPE for the year ended 31st December 2012 is 358 million. Now, we also have the B part. The company normally classifies computer software under previous uh, gap as of as part of uh, property, plant, and equipment. The amount of this component is 1.8 million for the period ended 31st December 2012. An examination of the software purchase agreement review, it can still be used for a period of 10 years. Now, if you look at what we have here, uh, the computer software under previous gap, the issue is that he has classified this as part of the uh, PPE, and this should have been what? intangible assets this should have been what intangible assets for every question additional information in the question you need to be able to identify what to be done it means you need to what reclassify computer software you need to deduct it from property plant and equipment the figure is 1.8 million that means you deduct it from property plant and equipment of the previous gap then you add it to intangible assets now if you also look at this, it says an examination of the software purchase agreement review, it can still be used for a period of 10 years. It means from the very first day that you are recognizing it as an intangible asset, you need to be able to amortize it, amortization over useful life, of, over useful life of 10 years. Now. For your amortization, po uh, your, your amortization policy, everything that you are applying under intangible asset, which aspect of uh, the standard talks about that? That is IAS 38. So you need to be able to understand the position of IAS 38 as it relates to treatment of an intangible asset for you to be able to address that uh, question requirement. Now for the C part, it says the company has a spare parts component which has been recorded as part of inventory at value of 52 million naira as at 31st December 2012. Remaining useful life of the spares is envisaged to be 10 years. Now, if you look at this, the spare parts component has been recorded as part of inventory. And if you look at the useful life of that spare part, it's showing 10 years. Now, there is a position of uh, two positions you need to talk about here. The first position is IAS 16, which is on what? Property, plant, and equipment. The second position is on IAS 2, which is your inventory. So, what the standard talks about in um, recognition of spare parts in your component is it should be recognized as an inventory provided it does not uh, it, the use of that asset does not exceed one year exceed one year 
So what it means is it is used for a what? A sh it has a what? A shorter lifespan. It has a shorter lifespan. Now, when a spear part is expected to have a longer lifespan, spear part with longer lifespan. And not only longer lifespan, it also uh, lead to functionality. It also lead to functionality of the main asset uh, of the main asset, without which, without which, it can, it cannot function alone it cannot work alone then it has to be capitalized along with the cost of the main assets now if you look at this this peer part in this uh, question uh, scenario is expected to be used for 10 years it means it is a wrong classification to have included it as part of your inventory figure in the financial period so we are at, as at the date you are switching over to IFRS you have to reclassify this particular spear part from inventory to property plant and equipment and also uh, calculate a depreciation you need to decide on your depreciation policy depreciation policy based on the what the useful life on that uh, spear part now on part D both current liabilities and non-current liability positions remain the same for the reconciliation period so it means your no adjustment affect uh, your current liability and your non-current liability then we also look at the E it says at 31st December 2011 expenses relating to issue of shares has been included in share capital and share premium at 99,000 and 41,000 respectively the accountant has charged these expenses in the period has charged these expenses in the period while also recognize the corresponding increase in equity so what the accountant has done here what the accountant has done is that he has debited his expenses for maybe 99,000 or 41,000 as the case may be then instead of him because he paid those expenses and guys instead of him to credit bank or cash he recognized this in equity for the same amount so let's look at the implication that one is having on uh, what he's supposed to have done he's supposed to have so what he's supposed to have done is to debit expense or this kind of uh, expense is what we call share issue expenses so the position of the standard for share issue expenses is that it should be expensed that it should be expensed now it should have credited bank or cash now so let's look at the implication that one has have on his financial report you will see that uh, that explain what he has here and he explain what we have here so we need to take it out from here and include it as part of our bank or cash now let's quickly go to our calculations now we want to prepare a reconciliation statement the first thing you are going to do in this kind of uh, question is to set your format